Ten Hag season review on. Ineos are really in for it. Eric Ten Hag gave them a very huge challenge because they need to do a spin of the century to see to it that the fans of Man United obviously don't really turn against them because they are really in what we call a tight spot and that's why Eric Ten Hag has gone ahead to put them because if they don't do the needful Eric Ten Hag is really gonna cause them problems at the club of Manchester United. Welcome to this channel, your United Matters channel it is. We having an update coming in from David Austin, Laurie Whitwell, Fabrizio Romano, all those are top journalists. As Lolly Whitwell is coming into you as a United correspondent for the Manchester United side for the Athletic. Now, we are here to obviously see that a lot really goes your way and hope you guys are really being served the best. Second video of the day after player ratings and we are into lots and lots of stories are really making rounds all over social media. Now, we thank God for the gift of life and we thank Allah for the gift of life and may the living to God bless you abundantly. The Muslims, <coughs> Barakla of Hikum. How many likes? 300 likes much in this video and obviously let's see what has gone here to come in through. Early morning, you know, David Austin, Laurie Whitwell, you all know they work for The Athletic. <clears throat> They've told us that Manchester United will conduct a season review next week, including the performance of manager Eric Ten Hag, before deciding on next steps of the football club. That's why, that's why they've gone ahead to let us know. And Fabrizio Romano also told us that in the next days, United will decide on the future of Eric Ten Hag as part of the review process taking place. Now, <clears throat> Why are they doing a review? You know, it's because Ten Hag has gone ahead to obviously win a game of football and has gone ahead to lift a trophy for the club of Manchester United. That's why they are really hiding themselves into this review stuff. But I tell you, Eric Ten Hag, if he lost to Man City, it would have gone ahead to be listed or written all over the world that he's no longer the manager of Manchester United. And I think... Even the statement would have gone ahead to be dropped just today because they would have gone ahead to be playing on the emotions of the fans as positivity would have gone ahead to go onto the Ineos so that they've gone ahead to suck Eric Ten Hag. But winning against Man City just went ahead to obviously <coughs> um, uh, destroy their plans to obviously coming through and suck Eric Ten Hag. You know, the plan was already there because <coughs> they've gone ahead to obviously talk to other managers. It has gone ahead to piss off Eric Ten Hag and they started doing that on a Friday. Can you imagine? On a Friday, that's when they started doing it because they knew to eat that Ten Hag is going to be sacked and they wanted obviously getting a manager as soon as possible. Now, the course of the puzzle has gone ahead to change and it's now Eric Ten Hag who is the hero and Ineos is the villain and for them to obviously pull out a very, 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 very huge spin to suck Eric Ten Hag, they need to obviously come up and really put in a very convincing statement. And right now, 90% of the fans of Manchester United want Eric Ten Hag to stay. Why do they want him to stay? Because ever since Alex Ferguson left, he's the only manager that has gone ahead to come in through and really won a trophy every season. Last season, he won the Carabao Cup. This season was going to win the FA Cup and none of the manager has gone ahead to do that. Remember, ever since Alex Ferguson left, Manchester United has only won five trophies. You know, Louis van Gaal FA Cup, Jose Mourinho in his first season, Carabao Cup and the UEFA Europa League. Then Eric Ten Hag putting on two, you know, two trophies in his first two seasons and he has gone ahead to raise the bar. He also hinted about it that I'm, one, I'm the first manager to win two trophies in two consecutive years and it has been really one of those moments that this club should even look at it and really understand that we are here for business and I'm here to win more trophies for the club of Manchester United. So that is it for Eric Ten Hag and it shows you how Ineos, Ineos's plan was sabotaged by the win of Manchester United. They all went in this game of football, I think not expecting Eric Ten Hag to pull out a win. And this is what I really hate about Ineos, that how come you get into a game of football like this and not really support your manager? <clears throat> it's written all over the world that he had players who were injured. He played with Lisandro Martinez, Verani the central defense, Kobe Mainu, Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford, Garnacho, and so on. And the team was really great. Even when we had players to come off, we had what we call 
quality that could equally match those players that were on the field of play. That's what made this game really important for the club of Manchester United. And in my preview, I told you how good it is. So, I just can't wait to see what decision is going to be put out next week by Ineos because they can't really take the entire. They can't. They can't take the entire next week without putting out a decision on whether they are sucking Eric Ten Hag or not. If the entire week elapses from 27th to the 2nd of June, then Eric Ten Hag's job will save. But I anticipate if Ten Hag is to be sacked, a statement has to be put out um, around Tuesday or Wednesday. <laughs> that is it. Eric Ten Hag is going to have to go on holiday. He's waiting for the verdict coming in through from the Glazers and Ineos. But I tell you what, they have gone ahead to obviously get a shocker of their lives because the decision they had gone ahead to make has to be overturned because the fans are all over them. And I've gone ahead to hear people saying that they might pull out a spin, sign Olise and sack Eric Ten Hag. Now, they can't sign in players before they sack a manager. <clears throat> that is it. They can't, they can't sign players before they suck in a manager. Which kind of player <clears throat> is willing to come to a club whose future on the manager's side is not known? That player is insane. If you are only say Manchester United wants you, Arsenal wants you, you come <clears throat> and Newcastle wants you, you decide to go to a club that is really having problems when it comes to the future of the manager. You get no way, no way that happens. You get no way that happens. I tell you, it doesn't happen that way. So, as it stands, it is really a very hard decision. You know, the Glazers are in between what we call the rock and the hard place because they can't make a stupid decision, they can't sign players because they need to obviously get assurance of who's going to be the manager, right. And if they have to keep Eric Ten Hag, they have to add him another year because a player won't come out and really keep himself at the club of Manchester United if he doesn't really know that Eric Ten Hag is going to be here for the other years. You get? So, it's really hard. It's really hard. And you know that some managers always have to be part of the negotiations to convince the player and show them exactly where they are going to be playing. But when you look at that side, when the list of managers are really available, it's very sickening. You can't tell me that Ineos wants to get us Pochettino, <coughs> McKenna, um, Thomas Tuko, or Dizabi. Out of those four managers, the shocking story is that McKenna is leading the rest. That is really the shocking story. How can McKenna read a rest to replace Eric Ten Hag? Now, <clears throat> if Ineos suck Eric Ten Hag and get him any manager, they would have gone ahead to set a precedent because we will be here asking them, now, <clears throat> you sucked Eric Ten Hag, who had injury players, he won an FA Cup, took us to Europe. If at all we fail to go to Europe, if at all we fail to win a trophy in two years of that manager, what will Ineos do? I think if at all I'm Ineos, the decision is simple. I keep Eric Ten Hag, you know, I'd trigger his other one year left to be having two years on his contract and let him be here. When he really fails, like in three, four months, I suck him. You understand? So, but I think they feel baffled. You know, they are very confused on what decision they are really going to be making. Sir Jim Ratcliffe came out and really had something to say about this when he said, it's a glorious, it's a glorious feeling to win the FA Cup final at Wembley. Manchester United clearly were not the faves to win today, but they played with total commitment and skill and overcame one of the great teams in football. We are all very proud of the players and the staff who were cut. Now, in that statement, you didn't hear him put out a credit to the manager. He just generalized him into the staff. You get? But I think, I won't dig deep into this, that it's a signal that they are going to suck him. But all I see in this statement is, Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos have been put into a tight spot by the manager. He's now the favorites of the players, fans, and they feel like, should we sack him? Should we leave him? <laughs> that is the situation in which they are in. But Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 
I expect a huge settlement to really come out. When it's for sucking Eric Ten Hag, it's going to be coming in through from Manchester United. If it's keeping him and they're going to have to make a decision, it will come in through from the likes of Fabrizio Romano and um, David Austin and very other good people that are close to Manchester United. <clears throat> but as it stands, we are hanging in balance. Now, the manager they want to sack has gone ahead to obviously get Hales coming in through from Pep Guardiola. And Pep Guardiola has gone ahead to issue <coughs> this to Ineos that they have to take a decision on Ten Hag's future. I don't know, but he's a lovely person. An extraordinary manager winning the FA Cup was important for them like it was for us last season. Now, there is a scenario I've gone ahead to think about. I don't know whether most of you have gone ahead to think about it. You know, <coughs> Eric Ten Hag, according to how they've gone ahead to treat him, if he happens to go from Manchester United and really go elsewhere and really have a very huge future <clears throat> and a chance for him to come and manage Manchester City happens, do you think he can reject the chance? He would say, I'm going to go and manage Man City and beat Manchester United and show them how they missed out on a very good manager. You get? And we are, we are really treating him in a very horrible way that any manager shouldn't be treated. Man City loves this manager. I've gone ahead to tell you that Omar Berada <coughs> knows exactly how Man City had gone ahead to really shortlist Eric Ten Hag as one of the replacements to this man. But Eric Ten Hag has the way he works, and I think Ineos are like, we should get in a puppet to come in through and really work with us. You understand? You know the record of Ineos. Ineos has gone ahead to sack five managers in the five seasons. They've gone ahead to manage Nice, and that is really very shocking. So, that is really very bad for, a pe for people to run Manchester United. And this is why I was pro Qatar. You remember? I wanted the Glazers to get out of this club 100%. Sell their shares, bounce out, and see to it that things don't go on as they had planned them. You know? But we go to Ineos, and Ineos is really trying to really do stupid things in here. Pep on Ten Hag said, we talked, we hugged each other. Now we are sad, but we celebrate tomorrow. What an incredible achievement we have done and will come back. In football and life, he win and lose in second half. We didn't give up and kept going. That's what he said. And celebrations for their title for their title is really, uh, really on. Eric Ten Hag also had something to say about this. And he put out a statement and said, all compliments to the team. We played very good to our identity, very strong. You have seen how we can play when we have the players on board. Some were not even fit, but the performance was very good. So that's what Ten Hag said. When I have my players, I'll play the best football. Now, Ineos, it's up to you to make a decision on whether you keep Eric Ten Hag or you sack him. But he has raised the bar so high at the end of the season by beating the best team in the world, that is Manchester City. Now, it's up to Ineos to show us what their plan is for this summer. Whether they keep Eric Ten Hag or not. So guys, let us know about what, what you really think about this. They are reviewing the season of Eric Ten Hag. Do you think they are really reviewing it? Or else, they had already gone ahead to make a decision, but Ten Hag winning the FA Cup has gone ahead to say to it that they really find themselves in a position of not really keep him at the club of Manchester United. Rokan David is my name. I sign out for now. See you later. 10 Hug Season Review by Ineos. I'm out.